the screen. Okay. Okay. So. So welcome to uh, this session. It's uh, called If Up Down 2. We all know what If Up Down is, so we're expecting some enhancements here um, on building on the existing infrastructure, and I'm happy to um, introduce to you now, you're going to say your name? Rupa Prabhu. Who comes to us from Cumulus, Cumulus Networks, and you're working on this yes, because absolutely. your employer is paying you. So please welcome, and uh, let's have a good session. Hello everybody, um, I'm Rupa and I work for Cumulus Networks, so I think I'll st just start with the talk. Uh, the outline, um, a bit of background of who we are because uh, that sets the context for why we went into these change, uh, why, why did we upgrade, I mean, uh, develop IFF down 2 and enhancements to IFF down 2. Um, a little bit of um, light into network interface configuration on network switches and the challenges we faced, a little bit about IFF down, introduce IFF down 2. Uh, a bit into the features uh, of I have done two next steps and questions after that. Uh, background uh, Cumulus Linux is a Debian based distribution for network switches. Our philosophy is uh, manage your network switch as a server. Um, we use the server distribution on a, on a network switch. We have made some enhancements to some of the packages. Um, and our philosophy is you use your existing tools to configure network switches. So your network switch ports appear as NIC ports on the server. And we, uh, we basically use the Debian server environment uh, to boot up the switch and yeah, what, uh, manage network interfaces, etc. So current release of Cumulus is based on Debian VZ. Um, and we started with uh, IFF down, deploying IFF down on our switches, and we faced a few challenges, and hence the IFF down too. Um, what kind of configuration we do on our switches? Usually, there are large number of interfaces. We have usually about 52 switch ports, and we configure a ton of bridges. Every VLAN is uh, a bridge, and we have bonds and tons of VLAN devices. Uh, and the VLAN devices scale with the number of VLANs. So you can imagine we have thousands of VLANs and thousands of bridges. And, and large number of interface attributes as well. We have a bunch of network protocols that run on our box because it's a network switch. So, and every interface, every bridge interface, we run STP, MSTP, and so we have a ton of at, inter, uh, attributes for STP, IGMP attributes that we need to be configured on interfaces. Mostly static configuration, uh, unlike hypervisors or desktops. This is, yeah. So the challenges we faced with existing network interface management tools, this is mostly in context of IF up down. Uh, but in general, we did a survey of other network interface management tools on Linux. And we did find that they didn't suit very well for our needs. So mostly most of the um, network interface managers are optimized for desktop and hypervisor environments, mostly to environments where uh, with dynamic uh, interface configurations. And we have seen that uh, complexity increases with the interface configuration scale. With large number of interfaces, the interface configuration becomes very um, complex. Large number of files, or the files get too large, and so on. Uh, in most cases, the dependency of network interface configuration uh, ordering is on the user. Uh, user has to decide. Uh, user has to declare his interface configuration in a way that bonds are um, bonds that are members of bridge ports have to be created before the before the bridge, etc. And lack of support for incremental changes to network interfaces. This it was particularly um, in context of IFF down. IF up down did not allow you to um, change an already existing interface or update configuration on an already existing interface. You had to bring down the interface and then 
uh, bring it back up. And lack of tools to query and validate. So you apply a configuration with IFF down, and then to query the applied state, you had to go back and look at the configuration using um, native Linux tools. For example, a bridge here, you could create a bridge using IFF down, but go back and look at it using BRCTL or IP route 2, etc. This slide uh, is basically um, just says the same things, but um, it also tells, it also shows what are the benefits of IFF down. Uh, it has a pluggable architecture, which is good. You can drop a script in for any new configuration that you want. Uses native Linux tools, uh, enables faster development, and you don't have to duplicate whatever your native Linux tool does into your network manager. For example, uh, today IP Route 2 is kind of becoming the uh, only tool to manage all network interfaces or create or create network interfaces. So we use IP Route 2 a lot, and we believe that in the future IP Route 2 is going to uh, have support for almost all types of interfaces. And IFF Down has good user documentation. It's a well-known tool. Um, and most of our previous customers, uh, first release customers, were already on IFF Down. So, and the challenges, most of them, uh, I spoke on the last slide. Um, the other thing was development was also a challenge because IFF Down was lit written in a literate programming language. And we did face a few bugs um, with IFF Down. IFF Down 2. IFF Down uh, 2 is basically re implementation of IFF Down in Python. Uh, we chose Python because uh, it's easier and faster development, and we could use existing modules and add functionality quicker. Uh, you will see in the next few slides. Um, and it's backward compatible with IFF down, uh, with the interfaces format, and also with the names of commands. The commands, uh, you'll still find the commands IF up, IF down, IF query, uh, but you'll find them with the um, newer options and, um, you yeah. know, there are a few missing, um, minor missing functionality, uh, like mapping and uh, maybe address other address families. It only supports INET and INET 6 today, but that is that will be trivial to add uh, in the future if needed. And it continues to use existing native Linux tools, uh, pluggable architecture. Uh, IFF down used bash scripts. This supports Python modules. Um, and meet some of the challenges that I described in the previous slides. Uh, packages. Um, I initially did it as two packages. Um, that, can, that could change the future, but um, to keep things separate, I have them as two packages right now. So IFF down 2 contains the base infrastructure to parse, uh, schedule, and order interface network, um, network interface configuration. IFF down to add-ons uh, contains a bunch of Python modules, um, add-on modules. As you can see, there is a module to uh, configure addresses, a module to configure DHCP, and uh, bonds, and ETH tool, and MSTP, bridge, etc. Uh, this picture uh, just um, shows the IFF down 2 package. Uh, that's the infrastructure package sitting at the top. I have done two add-ons, which are uh, add-on Python modules for each kind of uh, interface configuration. And you can see these modules, they spit out um, commands in native uh, tools language to configure network interface. Um, life of an interface object. So it's Python. and uh, IF up down used environment variables to pass on interface attributes to modules. Um, IF up down 2 uses a Python object. So the, on the far left, you see the first block shows you an ETC network interfaces file section, which uh, is an IFS object. And there you can see the IFS object translated, which each attributes. You can see some metadata. Um, IFF down 2 discovers uh, dependence of that particular IFS object. And passes the, the IFS object is passed on to the modules. And the modules translate that to native Linux commands. 
how does IFF down solve the network interface dependency order? Um, IFF down to the main infrastructure package queries individual modules for uh, dependence. For example, a bridge port. Uh, the bridge module is queried for bridge port dependence. Uh, sorry, bridge dependence, which are bridge ports. And it uh, builds a dependency graph of all the interfaces uh, in the ATC network interfaces file. It sorts them and executes them in uh, sorted order. And it provides options to query and execute uh, interface configuration dependency order. There is an example in the next slide. Um, so you can see uh, on the right, there is a tip, that's a typical graph, uh, typical configuration that we see. I'm not sure it's very clear, but at the top, there is a bridge. And it has switch ports, uh, VLAN devices on switch ports as it's um, as the bridge ports, and there is a bond interface, and bond has slaves. And that gets translated into the sorted interface list at the bottom. Built-in devices support. This was um, specific, uh, not a requirement, I would say. It was uh, because our files had too many VLAN devices, and it was like thousands of VLAN devices, and having all the VLAN devices getting listed in the ETC network interfaces file made it very large. So built-in devices support in fine print, it tells you the details. It basically, IFF down 2 can recognize VLAN devices and when they appear as dependents of a bridge and even physical interfaces. And it picks up those devices as it brings the bridge up. So this kind of reduced um, the interface size a lot. So. This, this is just an example of the previous slide. Um, options uh, to IF query, to query the dependence. You can, there is a with depends option, there is a print dependency list, um, or you can print the dependency list in dot format and can translate that dot into a visual format using any graph -vis tool. Incremental changes. Uh, IF have done two queries um, running state of the interface before it applies the delta config. IF query is extended to uh, with options like a running and check to uh, check the applied state of the uh, to compare the applied state against the persistent user supplied config. There's a new command IF reload. Uh, which is similar to IF up minus A, you can say, or similar to service networking restart, but uh, it only executes up on interfaces that have changed. And the example there actually shows that you can use IF query check option to check if a bridge interface, a running state of a bridge interface, uh, matches the user supplied uh, configuration in the net interfaces file. And yeah, the check basically returns with zero or one, depending on the running state. Here is an example of IF query check. Um, this, on the left side, there is a bridge with ports. And you can say check um, tells you that the bridge is all fine. And on the right side, I remove a port from the bridge. It indicates that there, was a, there is a missing port. And you can do an IFAP, and IFAP will apply the delta, that is, it will add the missing port to the bridge. And the next IF query check command actually indicates that the bridge is fine. Templating. Um, this was, again, necessary to reduce the file size. Uh, we, in our deployments, we have seen cookie cutter interface configurations for bridges, especially. So IFF down 2 integrates uh, an external templating agent uh, called Mako. And Mako was a choice because it was used in our uh, other projects at that time. But uh, IFF down 2 provides uh, easy options to plug any other uh, template engine. So at the right side, there is an example of how we create 100 bridges. Um, by using Mako. And Mako is nothing but you can um, encode Python 
language into your ETC network interfaces file. And you can use IF query to render this template to see your expanded uh, list of interfaces. So this reduces the file size to quite an extent. It API, um, it supports JSON, both input and outputs um, in JSON format. You can provide an ETC network interfaces as in JSON object format. And uh, the examples actually show IF query. Um, yeah, there's a format option to print in JSON. So all the, all the commands um, by default take native uh, input and output. But he, there is a format option to input and output in JSON format. I have query to persist running config. Um, so since I had all the infrastructure to actually query the running state, this was an easy addition to the tool. Um, what, it, what the example shows is you create a bridge using um, native commands and then use IF query running to actually uh, translate that running state into ETC network interfaces format. And the last command actually uh, cats that to ETC network interfaces. Next steps, uh, I'm looking at pushing IFF down 2 into the Debian repo, um, integrate IFF down 2 with system D, and also work with network manager. We want to be close to, close to Debian native as possible. And yeah, so then some more bug fixes and some more compatibility uh, options. So getting started uh, with IFF down 2, it's already on GitHub. And there is a lot of documentation. There is developer documentation as well to add um, more modules to IFF down. Um, and there is a lot of Cumulus Linux uh, documentation for IFF down 2. We have a ton of example files as well. And there is my email ID there. And that's about it, actually. Questions? Uh, hi. Hi. Yeah. So I'm relaying a question from IRC. There's people watching this uh, over the world. And the question uh, is, if there's a reason not to replace the current if up down with if up down to oh there is we would love to actually and uh, now the question is if there's a reason not to do it is i have down to better in is i have down better oh you mean uh, yeah the actually my first first slide <laughs> yeah my first slide uh, did contain uh, some challenges it is, we could not actually, um, sorry. Well, uh, perhaps if I, com if I can comment uh, about the experience we've had with if up down in Ubuntu. Um, there has been a delta for, for, for a large part for, and for a long period of time because of things like network manager, the managed true function that, that used to exist there. And one of the issues is that if up down is kind of hard to maintain if you're yes. um, trying to do stuff and, and trying to change it. So at least uh, making it in a, in a language that's easy, more easily approachable by people is a, a really great thing. Yeah, that was that would have been my exact answer. Uh, it's in literate. Uh, it's the question, so, sorry, the question is if there's a reason not to replace the old one with the new one. So if there's something in the new one that you would say, okay, there's something that's not yet ready or some so, cases that might not work. Yeah, like I said, there are two or three things that are not supported. It only supports INET and INET 6 today, but if desktop environments need um, other families, it could be added very easily. 
but yeah, those things, if they're fixed, I don't see any reason why it can't be. Maybe it's not exactly uh, what you had in mind when asking the question, or they had in mind when asking the question, but I've heard a lot of talk that uh, the system D guys plan to have network D, uh, you know, issuing the, no, seriously, issuing the syscalls directly for configuring <laughs> interfaces rather than, you know, shelling out to all of these external commands like IP, uh, and that, you know, maybe it's better if we just burn down the entire IF up down thing entirely and just move over to using that. Uh, I wonder if you've been talking to the system D maintainers about this. I have looked at system D right now. Um, it still has the same problems. Like, I think you have to order your interfaces file. But those can be fixed, obviously. Um, but I wonder if you've uh, talked to the system D maintainers in Debian about this, because I think if your plan is to replace IF up down with this, and their mm -hmm. plan is to replace IF up down with network D, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a problem coming. Sure. <laughs> we are talking to. So I, I think, I mean, we clearly understand that this is a conversation that needs to happen, and that's actually why we are here. Um, and part of the problem is that uh, the simple use case, in some sense, of a system D style solution, still for our use case, is going to not be complete. You still need a scriptable, templatable engine that will go on top. So where the, the breakdown happens and how the interfacing happens is something that we obviously are interested in making sure we arrive at a common answer to. We have no, I, I think it's fairly safe to say we have no uh, vested interest in making this be the solution, but clearly, as was noted earlier, IF up down was not cutting it for us. And this is our answer. If there's a better answer, that's okay. That's great. But the configurability and the templating is incredibly important because, um, I mean, on the desktop, you talk about four interfaces, maybe six VLANs, it's an interesting answer, or even on a server. On a switch with 4,000 VLANs, 16,000 VXLANs, and God knows how many ports coming in the next few generations, it becomes unmaintainable and unmanageable. And the thing that Rupa keeps talking about, the priority and ordering, keeping that in, in your head in five pay screenshots or five, you know, while it's scrolling by is impossible. It's, it's guaranteed breakage. And th that's a solution we have to have. So um, a couple of things. One, one on the, the system D network uh, D stuff, my understanding, that, that came up a little bit earlier in Debian Developer. There's been a little bit of discussion about that. Um, my understanding is, is that that is at present in development stage that I would call science experiment. Um, there's something there. It can bring up a network, but it's not, it, it certainly doesn't do everything that the existing IF up down does, let alone all, all the things that your, the, the enhanced one that you talked about today would do. Um, I, I think that, 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 that the future of the system D network D um, stuff is probably more along the lines of uh, if you have a system that it only is only going to have one static IP address with one static default route, um, you might want to just use systemd network D because it's about the simplest thing you can possibly run. And if you're in that situation, why have any complexity? But I don't think it, it has much desire to move higher in the stack. Uh, I think most of the systemd folks are using network manager to do anything that's particularly complicated. So I don't know that they were targeting the stuff that you're targeting with if up, if up down two. Um, and uh, the other thing is in terms of why not to replace the existing if up down with if up down two, the most common um, complaint that I have heard on that front is the fact that it's written in Python and if up down is a required package. So that would mean introducing at least some amount of Python into required, which is something that a lot of people have objected to in the past. Um, there are folks who are al already unhappy that we have Perl, ch big chunks of Perl in required, let alone adding a second interpreted language. Um, Ubuntu already did that, I think. So they've already, yeah, so they crossed that bridge, but Debian has not, at least to date. I have two questions, actually. Um, I would like to know, first of all, if, the, if there's going to be complete compatibility to all the, sh the scripts, the um, mm -hmm. IF up and IF down hooks, because we use them a lot in Debian packages. And my second question is um, whether IF up down two has any plans to support dynamic changes or because IF up down doesn't do that but for instance if your DHCP gets a new you get a new um, address as happens here at PSU mm -hmm. um, or if you go offline and so on whether you're planning to hook into the netlink layer and react to it yeah I think today we already hook into IF plug D and uh, IF plug D can do most of the <coughs> dynamic uh, configuration using IF up down 
And your first question on um, IFAB down compatibility, yes, I think we will be able to do full compatibility. I think it's very important. Yes, that you do yes. That. Uh, will this be packaged in time for the freeze? The Jesse <laughs> freeze? <laughs> well, well it, today it's packaged as devs. Uh, and it's not in the Debian repo, so first we'll have to get it into the Debian repo. And yeah. I think it, what he's saying is hurry up, if you want it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. I have a question more about how uh, Cumulus uh, uses this. Uh, are users of your switches uh, logging in and running these tools by hand, or are there uh, or have you designed this to allow there to be graphical or web-based front ends to uh, do things? They're usually logging in and running it, uh, use the CLI, but there's also orchestration tools that we integrate with, um, like Chef. So there are a bunch of Cumulus guys, <laughs> people sitting there, so they will definitely be able to. Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of different, you know, if you have one or two switches, you're probably configuring this by hand by SSHing in and, and uh, editing it. If you have, you know, a thousand switches, you're probably using either some homegrown orchestration tool or something like Chef or Puppet or Ansible or, you know, what, what have you. Um, there's no graphical package. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there, as far as I know, there's no web or graphical package. I mean, maybe Webmin has a module, but I'm not sure it's uh, something that we, <laughs> I think that reaction says it all right there. Um, there's nothing stopping from anyone from writing in the, that. And a, a lot of the tools, um, you know, have configurable output formats. You know, defaults to human readable, but you can get JSON formats or whatever. So if you're writing a tool like that, that would be a natural way to plug in. So, so I, I think it's important. I, I suspect if we we are our current use case is definitely in high volume, lots of ports, lots of instances. If you are in the desktop or you're trying to make it simple for a laptop, which is where we wanted to even get to there will need to be a graphical tool. I think that, that part we understand, and it's something we'll close. Well, yeah. yeah. Just don't make it wet, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something wrong about a network accessible network configuration tool. That maybe it's just me. <laughs> um, couple questions. What's the contributor license agreement? Uh, what's the license and what's the community like for if up down to? Licensing questions to sure. Nolan. I've got a follow up too. Okay. Um, there's no contributor licensing agreement. You, you own your changes, obviously. We'll, we're more than happy to uh, accept patches under the. Uh, what did, we went GPL on GPL. This one? Perfect. GPL. Okay. GPL v2. Yeah, we did. Um, and. Uh, the community right now is essentially you're looking at it, but uh, we're hoping to expand that, uh, hoping to get you know more people interested and involved. And are you guys running this on anything but Cumulus uh, network switch gear running Cumulus Linux OS? Like you talk about wanting this to replace if up down. Have you tried we it do in run servers? It, we do run it on VMs, which um, runs it. Yeah, I mean, we run it in VMs, and also our, our uh, internal, one of our internal servers is actually running uh, this as just a server. Um, so, you know, it, it's, the overwhelming majority of it is currently used on switches, but uh, it has, and I believe, Leslie. Yeah, uh, I've made sure it works on uh, Ubuntu 14.04. Um, so it, it works with no, no problem on that with, under, with four interfaces. So I have another question from IRC. It's people that are really eager to test this, and mm -hmm. they are asking if they can like, install it while they are running, and uh, it will take over from the old one. Oh. Like, no, we, there are instructions on the GitHub uh, documentation page. You have to, it conflicts with the IFF down package, so you have to remove the IFF down package and then install this. Yeah, but can this be done like live, or yes. will yeah. network be down in the middle? I think you can do it live. It depends on the config, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've not tested that, but... <laughs> if, you purge, if you purge if up down, um, the network stays up. So if you pick up from that, mm -hmm. then that's fine. Thank you, 
Well, um, one thing that I thought might be interesting to know, um, you mentioned that the templating helps reducing the size of the actual interfaces file, but um, to what extent have you tested, like, um, let's say, to what extent have you stress tested um, the tools? Say, could you install a million interfaces and how, what kind of time would it take to, to actually apply this, this kind of configuration? Wouldn't say a million, but um, maybe thousand. Couple thousand. It'll bring uh, down. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> if you're talking about several thousand interfaces, this will not be your slow point in the system. Yeah, you're because going, you're going to end up with uh, sys control and sys config becoming the slow yeah. drag while it does its linear walk through all interface names. Yeah, this will be done within like a tenth of the time. Yeah, we have seen a lot of bottlenecks in the other places. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need some help getting this into Debian, so I don't know whom to <laughs> talk to, maybe. What's <laughs> volunteers? Sure, I'll come and talk to you. Matthew? <laughs> you, you? Yeah, I might be well, that's cool. You guys should flock together after the session. Okay. And then, uh, okay. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay. All right, any other questions? I don't think that's the case. So thank you very much for thank this you. Uh, presentation. You've seen the. Uh, thank you. That there were a lot of questions. There's a lot of interest. I can tell you from personal experience that okay. people want something else. Okay. Um, so good luck. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, join the community. Thanks.